Hey folks, everything new under the sun. Um, I, I guess I'm back because a lot of things are now happening, significant things. Now, uh, I, I will comment, I guess, briefly on the massive arms depot struck by Ukraine, apparently, by their drones in Russia. One of the largest uh, uh, ammo depots ever. And uh, the governor uh, there, uh, as according to what I read, is telling people to evacuate the area. <clears throat> Does that mean there's uh, there were maybe... There's going to maybe be uh, nuclear weapons or, or, uh, or debris uh, or some sort of release like that, or, or maybe it's just chemicals, maybe it's just uh, precautions, but they're telling people get out of the area and get away from that area. That is huge. And, uh, you know, you have to ask the question, when is Putin going to say, that's it? Uh, you know, NATO is funneling weapons and money into Ukraine, and uh, Russia can't continue that on indefinitely. So when is it zero hour? When do they say that's it? Um, they've, they've taken out enough of our weapons, enough of our depots. They've invaded our country enough <clears throat> that we're going to start using nuclear weapons. And uh, they would have to take out NATO nations first, and they know it. And by the way, uh, Russia, Putin, uh, they've designed their whole uh, military, their whole doctrine, not around conventional warfare because they know they cannot beat uh, or win in a conventional fight. But they've designed it around a, a nuclear war. They've uh, designed it uh, so that they, uh, from the beginning, from the 60s, 50s, whatever it may be, they designed it so that they could absolutely win a nuclear war because they knew that's what, where, where it would go to. And they knew they would not be able to uh, uh, win a conventional war against you know many nations of the world, NATO, for example. So I'll leave it there. This is an image on Twitter. And uh, it's, uh, or X, uh, all types of electronic devices owned by, I go away, owned by Hezbollah operators are now blowing up in Lebanon and the region. So things are uh, exploding in Syria. Things are also exploding in Iran, as I understand. Apart from pagers and walkie-talkies, other devices such as fingerprint devices, solar power systems, and radios are now exploding. And even a ham radio was part of that. Uh, you know, I suggest uh, having ham radios around and uh, certainly get your license for that. Um, but these, the supply chain was um, uh, commandeered and, and uh, intercepted these radios on their way to whomever they were selling them to. And, and Mossad and Israel, whoever it was, uh, maybe in conjunction with the United States, you know, for all we know, but I'm sure the United States knows about it. Um, this would have been, ha this would have had to have been in the works for <clears throat> probably years um, to set up the company uh, to redirect, uh, to get the intelligence on the inside to ensure that they're picking up requests for delivery of these and intercepting them, updating them, um, you know, inserting whatever explosive material and then delivering to uh, the end person. There is huge amounts of intelligence, huge amounts of um, uh, machinery, money involved, uh, logistics uh, in this whole situation. So uh, if Israel did it, this is... Uh, an incredible feat, a monumental uh, feat. And you have to say, you know, when, when things that, you know, aren't likely to succeed, succeed uh, in Israel uh, and throughout uh, biblical times, you have to say, well, maybe, maybe God has a hand in that. Maybe uh, he is swaying the battle one way or the other. <clears throat> and is he for Israel? He certainly is. Is Israel around in the last days? Uh, she certainly is as a nation. Bible describes that clearly. Um, and uh, he has a plan for Israel, and he's going he's gonna to keep them alive. Even though there's going to be a lot of death and suffering, he's going to keep Israel as a nation alive uh, right up to the very end, folks. So expect that. So interesting, though, that it's also solar power systems, uh, fingerprint devices. What else? Uh, and I suggest to you that uh, cell phones will be the ones to go off tomorrow. If they've gotten into walkie-talkies and pagers, they knew each and every individual stage of communication devices and they probably went all the way down the line covered all their bases and they probably have cell phones covered they probably have um, you know uh, ready to take down the internet if they need to and you know what I mentioned that uh, they would uh, this is likely the trigger for war what do they do when or how do you know when World War 3 is starting communications go down this is what Hezbollah just found out communications went down they are now being invaded so here's the news from Zero Hedge uh, Israel's uh, war cabinet. Uh, let me just check. You can see that. Yes, Israel's war cabinet. Green lights offensive war against Hezbollah. So this is it, folks. You are on the bleeding edge of this battle. You just saw the lights go. You just saw communications be destroyed. This is what any enemy of the United States will do when your internet and your cell phones go down. Um, you know, 
You need radios uh, so that you can receive, and you need radios <clears throat> in Faraday cages. If they had uh, uh, pagers, radios in Faraday cages, they would never have been able to receive a signal to explode uh, in this case, and there probably are. Now, what happens if they're unexploded and you take them out of the Faraday cage and try and use them? Well, that's the next question, right? And I'm sure Israel had a plan for that. And so, you know, you may not have a choice. If any enemy country wants to take out your comms and they know you have Faraday cages or at least they know of that technology and everybody does, then they're going to do something to circumvent that and uh, uh, ensure they uh, get your electronic device so that they can take out your communications. So, long story short, have many, many different kinds of communication. FRS, ham radio, regular radio, shortwave radio, so that you can listen, so that you can collect information. Have them in Faraday cages, in garbage cans, whatever it may be. Um, because, again, Hezbollah just found out um, that uh, um, at least the nation of Israel and their intelligence community uh, can take out every point and piece of communications. And it was probably a multi-year under um, uh, pro project, if you will, uh, by the IDF if they did it and likely in conjunction with the United States and other countries multi-year very very long project to get these uh, manufactured and then into the hands of the people and have them trusted right as many suspect and feared this uh, deadly two-day Israeli covert operation to blow up pages walkie-talkies small electronic devices was but preparation for a likely Israeli military ground operation in southern Lebanon Lebanon it appears war is here this is what I said before. They take your communications out. When your communications go down, look out. Get into your bunkers if you have one, uh, because uh, something is coming, and that's going to happen. That's going to ha that's happened in every war, especially in the technological age, and that's go that's happening in, Hez in uh, with Hezbollah in the Middle East, and that's going to happen on the wider scale when Russia says, "All right, that's it. I can we can't fight NATO conventionally. Here comes the nukes. Here comes the hypersonics." Right. So, be prepared. And and you won't even know it, other than your cell phone will start working or your internet will stop working. Israeli cabinet has given uh, PM Netanyahu and Defense Minister Gallant the authorization to undertake military action against Hezbollah, even if it leads to all-out war. So far, 14 people killed that we know of, 450 wounded in the second day of explosions. The Israeli army announced it's transferring the 98th Division from Gaza Strip to the northern border with Lebanon as tensions continue to escalate. With 10,000 to 20,000 soldiers, the paratroopers and commandos will now join the 36th Division under the Northern Command. Remember, many, many, I don't know what percentage, but thousands of Hezbollah members who would have uh, ran to the front lines to uh, confront Israel are now in the hospitals um, with missing fingers, uh, you know, missing hi hips, uh, or at least uh, uh, skin blown off, whatever it may be. They're trying to heal. They are not ready for battle, and this is exactly what Israel planned um, even if they uh, were you know even if this came early and they had to trigger the stuff early this would have been their whole game plan all along um, get the get the uh, potential uh, combatants into the hospitals and uh, and get them in there for a few days so that they can't join the war and it's, it was brilliant uh, if, if IDF did this if Israel did this <clears throat> brilliant move uh, and then and then attack uh, Netanyahu got the green light for war with Hezbollah. Um, here's a here's a comment from uh, uh, Beirut, Lebanon. My cousin in Beirut messaged uh, saying she disconnected her baby monitor and other household appliances and devices. Our people are unaware of which devices are safe and which are not. <clears throat> and that's very valid. To be honest, uh, when war comes, you're not going to know which of your devices have been hacked into, uh, have been... Uh, pulled aside in the supply chain and uh, monitoring added to it, explosive devices added to it. You don't know. You simply don't know. Even if you take it apart, even you know one of the capacitors on the board that looks like it's soldered in uh, could be a little explosive device. You don't know. This is the face of the new war. It's unlikely. This was probably a very uh, specific targeted attack. Uh, you know, uh, from one nation state to another. But you don't know. You don't know what Russia's into. You know what, You don't know what fingers uh, China has in the pot or uh, your own, own government. You don't know what fingers they have in the pot. Remember during COVID, they, uh, they uh, looked at the uh, data from all the cell phones to make sure we were at home when, when, it was, when we were under lockdown. They made sure that everybody was complying by monitoring our cell phone activity, right? So even your own government is uh, monitoring and tracking this. 
This is an image of cell, a cell phone store, apparently, uh, where a bunch of cell or uh, not cell phones, but maybe uh, pagers and other communications devices hadn't even been sold yet, and they blew up. Uh, Hezbollah's Al Minar TV is also confirming wireless devices exploded in the hands of those carrying them uh, in several Lebanese areas. Uh, so a bunch of videos you can go to X uh, and and look at these. Um, but uh, uh, just a fascinating thing, fascinating thing. Uh, this is on Zero Hedge. You can check it out. Um, but all this is happening. This is unprecedented. This is uh, incredible and of biblical proportions. The extent uh, to which it happened, the covert operations that occurred, the 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 shock and awe of this that so we've never seen such a thing even in the movies. Um, uh, you know, in in large part. Um, so it's incredible uh, to see this happening. Be prepared. This is why you need a Faraday cage, folks. I think Hezbollah will now know to carry devices in Faraday cages until they absolutely need them. And then when you pull them out, you don't know what's going to happen, right? So this is also going to put fear in Hezbollah. They don't know what communication device they can use now. And anything that is left is going to be uh, uh, spied upon, right? Listen in, uh, listened in on uh, by uh, Israeli intelligence and other intelligence um, uh, folks you know from us wherever it may be so i'll, I'll just leave there guys um incredible stuff uh thanks for watching i'll leave there we'll see you in the next video